me yes. during the pandemic. It's a choice. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually, not, uh, uh, it actually very much was a choice. I mean, we didn't expect to get pregnant and then we got pregnant and we had to make this incredibly hard decision and we chose to have this baby. Uh, and then like less than a month into it, oh, a global pandemic. So, I mean, I think there's so many parents who had kids during that time who had similar experiences of like complete isolation. You couldn't celebrate with friends or family. There were no uh, baby showers. There was no like partners going into the hospital visits. And, you know, it, it was an incredibly hard time. But at the same time, it, it, there's something so bizarre and funny about like, wow, this is the worst thing that could have happened. And yet I'm feeling great because I have a kid. Like, it's hard when people say that, like, oh, the 2020, huh? And I'm like, yeah, it was it was pretty great. Plus, I got free paternity leave. Like, right, it, right. how you reconcile oh, those two things existing side is, by side. It's a very bizarre feeling because it feels like I can't actually feel like this is an incredible thing. Not to say it wasn't an incredibly hard year and an incredibly painful year for all of us, but... You know, I look at this child and I'm like, I can't believe this came out of all this pain. You reckon with a lot of complicated topics over the course of this YouTube special, one of them being the American dream. Take a, take a listen to this part of the clip. My parents are immigrants from India, as you can imagine. Stand-up comedian was not their ideal job for me <laughs> when they left everything behind. They did not come to this country praying, please God, give us an over-educated clown. <laughs> As a stand-up comic, what risk am I taking? If I fail at stand-up comedy, I simply land on the safety net that was created by my hard-working immigrant parents. And is that not the American dream? <laughs> to be successful enough where your piece of <laughs> kid survives even if they don't deserve to? How'd your parents feel about that joke? God, I sound terrible. <laughs> I sound like <laughs> such a, a terrible kid. Uh, they were like, yes, this is accurate. This well, is Because we're in a moment where we, where we talk about immigration. We talk yeah. about being first. We talk about writing and rewriting America's history. And so the experience and it being captured by people who have actually lived, it feels particularly vital. Yeah, I mean, I think part of it is the American dream is almost for the kids, right? Your dream is to try to stay in the country, be able to support family back at home, be able to start a family. But, like, I was able to do what I wanted with my life. So an extension of that American dream isn't being able to do whatever you want. It's for your kids to be able to do whatever they want. And so I'm incredibly privileged. And somehow stand-up comedian is the byproduct of the American dream. It's going to be so interesting to see how that translates to your own kind of Okay, Let's talk about the real reason you're here, which mm -hmm. is the your revelation about your interaction oh, with uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez before <laughs> she was a member of Congress. Yeah, she was running the first time around. And she messaged me on, uh, you know, on Twitter when that was a thing. Mm -hmm and uh, said, you know, she represented Jackson Heights, which is where I grew up. She, like, loved my comedy, knew a lot of people that loved my comedy, would love to collaborate. And I'm like, I'm pretty busy right now. And <laughs> don't really have the time. I'm making a documentary about a cartoon and working on my stand-up, so I don't really have time. And then she reached out again, and I just never wrote back. And then all of a sudden, I see a scroll saying that she won, like, you know, during the primary results night, and... Uh, Oh, that was the lady, wasn't it? And it was, it was the lady. And uh, I've been talking about it in my stand-up act for years since then. It finally came out in this special. And uh, I, she saw it. And she very uh, gracefully accepted my apology. I'm just not... What, what is the lesson? Um, NPR famous isn't really that famous. Uh, <laughs> and so my ego was way too big than my credits. And... Uh, you know, I, I, could be, I could be a major political figure right now, and I blew it. I would have had AOC's ear. Who knows what would have happened? I think I have about less than 30 seconds left, but I do want to ask you, <laughs> since it's AAPI Heritage Month, and you have been very vocal about the portrayal of South Asians in media, yeah. uh, like, where you feel we are in this moment? I mean, this is an interesting moment, considering everyone's buying everyone else, so there's fewer streamers and fewer places. But I would like to think that there's a generation now that grew up with diverse representations and now expects diverse representations, where if they see something that doesn't have that, they would call it out and find it strange. So that is my hope, that it's irreversible. It can't go back. You've already opened the Pandora's box of diversity, and this is where we are.
Hari, I, I promised you that I ask my hardest question when I have 30 seconds left so that you can <laughs> attempt to answer it. Hari Kondabolu, thank you so much. What a treat to have you here. You can watch Vacation Baby right now. It's available on YouTube. And a reminder that tonight you have to catch the final episode.